Hey, you traders, Sean from GMT Futures and FX. What I want to do is just work you through basically some tips on trading the Renko charts. Now, obviously, one of the things that we need to make sure is that any time we're testing or trading, that we need to ensure the integrity of our testing because we want to be objective. We want to make sure that when we go into the market in real time, that we're going to get uh, fairly accurate results from our testing to our live trading. So a couple of things you need to be aware of with Renko Bricks. Obviously, the Renko Brick is constructed based on whatever value you put into uh, into your format symbol. So within TradeStation, if you right-click on the chart, you'll see it on this Euro Yen. I'm putting in a brick size of 0.1. So that means that there's going to be 10 pips per brick that I'm going to be trading. So each one of these Renko Bricks is going to have a value of one pip, or a total value of 10, 10 pips. So you can see that there, it should be 10 pips per brick. So if we have a look at the high, the easiest way to test it is just to uh, to grab, grab your data window uh, and just look at the high and the low. Now remember that when you're look, dealing with Renko, you basically are only getting the value that you're selecting as part of the uh, chart. So if you if you you'll see often that uh, if that well what you'll see is that if that if there's a move to the high of this brick here, this cyan brick there, and it's less than 10, 10 pips, then it won't print that uh, those additional pips on top of that brick. Uh, so you're only seeing the value of the brick that you selected. So let's have a look here. The high here is uh, 138.91, so 138.81 is that's a 10 pip spread. So basically, you've got your high and low there. And again, like on the right hand side, I've got a six brick Renko, and that's uh, showing six six points between the high and the low. So, or six pips, I should say. So basically, one of the things that you need to be careful and cognizant of is that if you're trading in the forex market and you're live, that the spread can sometimes take you out of these trades and that's something you need to monitor. So when you're monitoring your charts in real time, then you definitely want to be be very careful of the fact that uh, you could get taken out on the spread and your strategy still may think it's in the trade. So that's one thing. The next thing is for accuracy, you want to make sure that any stop or target that you place on your Renko bricks when you're doing your back testing and your strategy automation that it's a value of your brick size because otherwise it's not going to accurately pick up where that trade went out. So for example, if I'm using a 10 brick, uh, 10 pip Renko, then I'm going to have my, my stop as a multiple of 10. I don't want it as a multiple of 3 or 7 or 9. It's got to be 10 so I can accurately see where I'm getting taken out. And the same goes for when I'm, when I'm getting into a trade. I need to have that matching up perfectly with my brick size. So I wanted a multiple of 10. If it's a, if it's a six brick Renko, then it's going to be a multiple of six. So it, the stop might be a six point, a six point offset, or a six pip offset, it might be a 12, might be 18. So you, you get the picture there. So you've got to have it as a multiple of brick size. Now the other thing to remember too is you want to make sure that your targets are a multiple of your brick size as well. So everything we do within our strategy, and I'll just go into our strategy here, needs to be that multiple of 10. So because we've got a 10 brick Renko. So this this is running a, uh, this is automatically taking entry off the first first no trend entry, which is this, uh, the red resistance or, or green support. And there's my, here's my initial stop, 10 pips. There's my trailer stop, negative 20. So there are multiple of 10. That's, that's critical. And any target I have, which I don't have at the moment, would need to be a multiple of my brick size. So the other, now the other critical thing with Renko is that you anchor your chart. And what I mean by that is you need to make sure that wherever you, whatever chart you're trading, you want to have an anchor point. So a point at which it starts. And what you don't want to do with trade stations, you don't want to have this last day, last day, and then the days back being a value that you uh, that is rolling. So you don't want that to be two days back or 
10 or a month back or five months back because that that last month will drop off every time and then what will happen is when you reload your charts your Renko bricks will reset and uh, construct differently so you've got to make sure ideally what you want to do is if you anchor the first date that means that 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 is anchored to that date so then for the next month or two months your charts are very accurate you can go back and see exactly where the trades were taken you don't want uh, you don't want data dropping off now what I would do though is I would probably have a rolling two month or th th I would probably have a rolling I would have a rolling quarterly chart so I would track my uh, charts quarterly just so I've got an anchor point and I'd l at least have a week of data loading up that chart before I start trading so my Renko bricks are constructing properly and particularly with dynamic support resistance that we're using we want to make sure that uh, that we've got dynamic support resistance setting up properly. So with these, this chart here, this one is anchored, and we'll just go and do our chart. This one here is anchored on the uh, the 22nd of December. So you can see here, it gives you a week of chart action, and then you've got a couple of days of the next uh, that month, and then we, we're into January. So it gives you a good lead up to the 1st of January. And that's important. You definitely want to have that good lead up of chart, uh, chart data, so your Renko bricks are setting up properly. And if you're consistent with that, then uh, you can't really go wrong. So, guys, that was a, just a very quick tip on Renko. Just some of the key things to remember: anchoring your chart, making sure that your brick size is a multiple of your stop and target, your stop and target are a multiple of your brick size, and also making sure that when you're reviewing your stats that you you're going to you're likely going to get between 70 to 80 percent accuracy because remember we've got the spread to contend with as well so you've got to make sure you've got an alert service or some service on your trade station or you've at least gone into the trade manager and set up the email alert to let you know that there's a strategy mismatch so we'll, we'll take you through some more of the strategies that we've got running and give you some updates on their performance have a fantastic day look forward to catch you on the next update cheers Thanks for joining us today, traders. If you'd like to become part of our team in 2014, all you need to do is contact either myself or Luke at info at gmtfutures.com and we can get you started pretty much straight away. So if you've always wanted to become a professional trader and you want to start using a uh, high-performance automated system, then uh, definitely send us an email, info at gmtfutures.com or shane at gmtfutures.com or you can either give us a call at 617-336-00875 and we can get you started straight away. So any questions, feel free to send them through. Otherwise, have a fantastic day and I look forward to catching you on the next update. Cheers.